Okay then, so <clears throat> the second section, um, Origins and Approaches, um, unfortunately was not as good for most people. Some people excelled at this section, but um, vast majority of you, it appeared that this was kind of like a chink in the armour. Um, I'm presuming with my students that it's that you're not revising uh, the material as we're covering it so this was the most recent stuff that we've done in lesson some of you maybe haven't understood it but I definitely got the sense that there was just very little recapping of this material so obviously as we count down to the exams now you should be going back over everything that you've covered in lesson on a weekly basis um, like we did for the first section please work out the percentage for your marks and you can see how this differs um, overall in terms of this section against the, the first section and obviously research methods which is section three so if we look at the first section uh, sorry first question on this section overall even though it was disappointing this question the stuff on vunt um was actually one of the better answered questions on the full paper so a number of you achieved over half marks which showed that you had revised the origin section but you maybe hadn't got round to revising the latter stuff on behavioral psychology so out of six it was pretty easy actually to pick up the full six marks um you can see their possible content vunt is the father of psychology he moved from philosophy to psychology first lab um, in 1879, promoted the use of introspection. Um, he also talked about structuralism, so thinking that our experience of the world around us and our consciousness can be broken down into different uh, components. A lot of you were able to tell me that. Um, introspection was the way that he investigated it, so showing them a stimulus and then responding their, their sorry, recording their responses to it, um, and then talking about how he paved the way for later scientific psychology and empirical techniques so what was done well um most of you were able to tell me that he was the father of psychology he did the first experiment and he gave me the proper date rather than just saying 1870s introspection um and most of you told me what that involved you also said that his work involved standardized procedures and controlled extraneous variables which we'd never seen before and that that had led to the development of behavioural and cognitive psychology. Um, some of you who dropped marks on this um, just couldn't tell me really what structuralism was. So in order to get your six out of six, you really needed to have a, an understanding of where introspection was grounded, i.e. what was his theory first and then how did he investigate it. So if we just look at the mark scheme, I could say it's pretty lenient here and most of you are in kind of like this middle level. Um, so knowledge of one's role is evident. There's some inaccuracies um, and there's some use of specialist terminology, but on the whole, pretty good um and i have to say i was absolutely chuffed to bits with how many of you up to level three your answer was clear it was coherent it was concise i was given six marks for a lot of people who only really if you read it back to yourself were writing kind of like eight to ten lines and it was all in there so really really well done on this first question so annotate your answer obviously accordingly using the terminology from the mark bands and the previous material of what you did well and what was missing then you can see why you got what you got moving on to the next question really really disappointing um this question if i just zoom in here this question and the social change question from the mock which was the previous assessment were tick box style now the tick box style questions are there supposed to be your easy marks but a lot of you were just losing these three marks which is a grade um because you're just not reading the statements carefully so the ones that were getting you any credit were cr is a learnt response because it stands for a conditioned response conditioned means learnt r is obviously a response we go through conditioning that's what's happening to us we're learning something we learn to do that by association and a UCS, an unconditioned stimulus, produces an unconditioned response. Learning through trial and error, 
is operant conditioning. A neutral stimulus produces an unconditioned response. No, an unconditioned stimulus produces an unconditioned response. A neutral stimulus produces no response. Um, a UCS is an unconditional response. Um, the unconditional is wrong. Also, S is a stimulus, so it can't be a response. Um, CS is paired with a UCS, no, UCS is paired with a NS during conditioning and then extinction and spontaneous recovery were just the wrong way around purposely to kind of catch you out. So those statements, I know there's a lot going on there but you should just really take the time to read those statements carefully because um, it should be three easy marks, right? Okay. Next then, one strength and one limitation of the behaviourist approach. Now, this is different to the locus of control question because it's three and three. Um, so this did require the IEC format. You had to get conclusions in there if you wanted to get up to full credit. So likely content... Um, this stuff here about demonstrating cause and effect, um, we didn't give you that, but if anybody was kind of thinking on that lines and trying to come up with their own evaluation points, then you could have got credit for that, arguing that sometimes the evidence is difficult to establish cause and effect because the um, extraneous variables might not have been uh, controlled correctly, but that was difficult for you to achieve. Um, this point here sees behavior as environmentally determined, whereas some behaviors may be innate. A lot of you went for that, um, talking about kind of the reductionist idea. Um, so a, a lot of you did do that. And also something that's not on the um, mark scheme, which a lot of you chose to do, was the animal research point. That A lot of the research from Skinner and Pavlov is based on dogs and rats. Um, less complex than us, obviously they don't have free will, they can't make their own choices, so therefore the behaviourist approach is a little bit invalid in terms of explaining human behaviour. The strengths, I have to say, were better than the weaknesses. So the practical application point was really, really good talking about systematic desensitization and unlearning things and then a lot of you went for that uh, more basic point about it being scientific so again if we just have a look at what you did well so good knowledge of systematic desensitization and the process of how we unlearn a phobic response was very very well explained um, good knowledge of the strengths of lab research so controlling ev standardized procedures cause and effect um, a decent understanding of reductionism, but you'll see why a lot of you were criticised there. And most of you are in band two, so you got between three and four. Remember, it is three and three, so it's three marks per evaluation point. So what was done poorly then? Um, the lab research point was not well applied. If you look back in your booklet, we actually gave you Skinner as an example. Um, you need to be talking about the fact that the IV was manipulated, so that was the reinforcement um, or the consequence, and then the DV, which was the repetition, was measured, which allows you to establish cause and effect. So that was poor for a lot of you. You're only getting one out of three. Um, likewise, with the reductionism point, it wasn't well applied, it wasn't well explained. So a lot of you were saying that it oversimplifies behaviour, but you were forgetting to say that it therefore ignores the um, the effects of biology and cognition, and you didn't say that it, it kind of like oversimplifies it right the way down to conditioning. So just be careful with that. As I mentioned a minute ago, the animal research point was well done, um, but you weren't necessarily applying it to the behavioural approach so you weren't doing the conclusions so you weren't saying this means that the behavioural approach is not valid to explain human behaviour but on the whole very well answered that one actually. Um, moving on to the last question on this section this was your um, application question. Now this question was a real sting in the tail for some of you um, because it was full application um, in order to get anything any marks out of four it had to be applied to Bradley there was loads of you who 
had good understanding of social learning theory and it was so difficult to give you zero um but if you flick it forward if you look at that AO2 for AO2 is application and that's all of the credit look at this possible content there's nothing in there just for talking generally about social learning theory so unfortunately some of you ended up with zero because there was no application um, if we do look at kind of what was credit worthy, you needed to be talking about um, the cognitive processes that occur between the stimulus, so him observing his pal and responding, so copying. And you also needed to be talking about kind of self-efficacy, the fact that he forms a mental representation of his his. Uh, friend holding the snooker cue and um, whether or not he can repeat it um, talking about the fact that his friend is the same gender as him um, which makes imitation more likely if there's any vicarious reinforcement so if his friend because if we look back at the stimulus stimulus sorry if his friend has potted um, the the difficult shot then that's obviously going to act as vicarious reinforcement and that will allow him um kind of like to want to imitate that behaviour. So as I've just said here, most people scored at least one mark, but some of you were wrong with talking about operant conditioning. There was some good understanding of social learning theory and mediational processes, so thinking before you act. Um, the main issue here was, like I've just said, no application. Um, I've given you an example, referring to his friend being the model self-efficacy because he thinks he can replicate the shot, vicarious reinforcement because his friend potted the shot. Um, so notice again, there are no marks for any answers that don't refer to Bradley. So annotate your answer and then we're ready to move on to the final section, research methods.